finally, that brings us to Texas, um, a place where missions were particularly challenged by the fact that um, um, in many respects, Texas was beyond the, the frontier. Texas in the 18th century uh, remains a frontier because it is where Spanish authority um, really doesn't extend beyond the immediate confines of the, of the three population centers that the Spanish managed to uh, maintain actively. The rest of Texas was controlled by Indian peoples, some of them very successful uh, Indian peoples who saw very little need uh, for the cultural adaptations um, and the acceptance of Christianity that uh, Fray Antonio Margil de Jesus and men like him um, represented. So uh, the mission field in Texas was a difficult one. Uh, not only was it remote, um, but it was challenged by Indian peoples who had alternatives. The Texas missions um, have often been portrayed as a failure. Uh, but to the degree that they accomplished the goal of converting uh, native Texans into Spanish subjects, we have to say that we will never truly be able to, to get a, a good sense of how successful they were, but we can't really say that they were unsuccessful because every single success story, every single conversion um, of an Indian to Catholicism and to turning them into a good Spanish subject meant that they were being turned into essentially uh, a Mexican colonial. So we know that uh, missionaries were converting uh, Coahuiltecans and Caroncoans and, and, and in some cases even Apaches and Comanches into um, good Spanish subjects, into good Mexican uh, colonials. So that brings us to the last story uh, before I uh, answer a few of your questions uh, and that is uh, the story of Antonio Margil de Jesus in, in Texas. He comes here last. This is, this is really his last um, missionary posting and so by the time he, uh, he's posted to what is the Texas frontier, he's, um, he, he has his aches and pains, so he's, he's stuck at San Juan Bautista on the Rio Grande for a while. He doesn't get into Texas until a little later, so he doesn't get in on the founding of the first missions. In 17, um, um, uh, 1718, um, 1719, he helps to establish a couple of missions in East Texas, um, including one next to what will become the capital, the first capital of Texas at Los Adais. Um, and, in, in, uh, and then he comes to San Antonio and he makes the argument that a, that a mission is needed in San Antonio because there's no, um, otherwise it's too far for his missionaries from his college to walk all the way from the Rio Grande all the way up to East Texas without being able to stop and uh, refit, uh, resupply themselves and, and uh, really to uh, rest. Uh, somewhere in between. So he's able to convince the Viceroy that uh, the Zacatecas College needs a mission in San Antonio and that is the mission that becomes uh, San Jose y San Miguel de Aguayo. The mission, like most of the others that are uh, established in the San Antonio area, has to move once or twice before it gets its permanent location. And when he starts it, um, it's just a few um, thatch covered uh, wooden post buildings, very primitive affairs. Antonio Margil de Jesus um, never gets to see the mission flourish. He's only there for its, uh, its opening couple of years. So uh, what we see today at Mission San Jose, that big uh, stone uh, church and that granary and those walls and everything, those are things that happened in the course uh, of the next uh, 60 years really. Uh, the mission church doesn't open until 1785. So we're not dealing with anything that was, um, that was there originally when he established it. He, um, he organized the Indians uh, so that uh, irrigation ditches could be established. Some of the first things that um, needed to be d uh, done at a mission was is essentially to uh, put up a, a hut in which the missionaries could live. 
another building that could serve as a chapel, and then the opening of irrigation ditches, the clearing of fields, the planting of crops, all the basic things that were going to create a, a permanent presence. And in all of that, what one sees are all of these worlds of Antonio Margil de Jesus coming together. They come together um, at Mission San Jose because it, it represents um, in its architecture, it represents bits of Spain and of Europe, um, in its technologies, um, in its uh, way of, of organizing labor. All of these things uh, represent the worlds that Antonio Margil uh, de Jesus represented. 